like um, oh. enough sponsor donation income for me to work part time on it, which is quite nice. Mm -hmm. Like something like after GitHub's matching like over a thousand euro per month. Um, yeah, that's not that much in Switzerland. <laughs> Why can't I go back? Did you rebind the keys? Yes, I did. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's, that makes it difficult. But you can but use Control O, so I basically matched and used all of the uh, Vim shortcuts into the browser. So Control o, o to go back and Control E to go into. Or to go forward and backward? Yeah. I just relaunched with the default key bindings. Or so, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so um, maybe I'll start with. Uh, all right, the help is still broken. If you happen to have OSCIDOC installed, which you do. Oh, yeah. Somehow, yes. Um, let's fix that if I can. Oh, wait, the. The cable? Yes. Oh. Hmm? Something broke. Maybe you just want the terminal on the first window? <laughs> hmm? Can you go on the first? Um, the first? Uh, ah, now we are back? Okay, maybe it was a cable. Okay. Weird. Good. So, do you know uh, like how or where yeah. you installed Q? Put. Or just go back to the first screen? What? <laughs> but it's a cable, I think. Yeah, but what do you want to install? Oh, yeah. go back. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's weird. Do you know like where you have Cube Browser installed? I think use our local bin, I think. But, but just which, yeah. Uh. Well, yeah, the problem with which is it just shows me that's an alias, which you wouldn't need anymore oh. nowadays. Just do which minus a. Yeah. Is it like oh, all sure. or? Ah. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Use a local pin. Yeah. Hmm. And uh, that's two. Okay. Do, uh, do you have the same directory twice in your path? That's open. Mm. Ah, so you have a. <laughs> browser here I, and this I, rip. I have an install script, yeah. Oh, some weird legacy Python. Yes, of course. <laughs> because I'm not using Python. <laughs> mm. <laughs> and nothing has changed, right? <laughs> this is the same issue. <laughs> Okay, now you should have documentation. Oh, okay. Maybe. Uh, oh, it's starting screen again. Yeah. yeah. And we got. Oops. Yeah. Nice. Okay. Nope, still broken. Oh, right. Uh, that was the wrong script. My bad. Most people get by. How do I get. Uh, what is the first oh. terminal? Yeah. I get used to my keyboard, that's great. Very <laughs> <laughs> fast. You want to let I have cute browser installed as well? Yeah, I think so. Can I say that? It's a it's a Mac be careful. It's a Mac. Yeah. It will kill you probably. Even more than my small it's Netflix. Not free it's not free software. I mean, now I, go, I got. Now I'm getting used to this laptop and then switching again. Yeah. <laughs> 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 well, let's just wait for a couple of seconds until the, the docs are generated and then I can show that. A Mac, of course, is. So what's the range? 65,000. Ah, you can. <laughs> you can switch between either Qt Web Engine, which is based on Chromium. Or Qt WebKit, which is based on WebKit. So but it's based on Chromium. 
depends. You can use either WebKit or Chromium. But uh, Qt WebKit library isn't really well maintained. Like the last release was like over a year ago, which is not something I'd recommend for a browser engine. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's it's like a one man thing by now because officially it's not supported anymore. Oh, Cute WebKit, it's it's and there will probably be a new release at some point. And uh, I just need to Second find. Screen. There we go. That looks better. Oh, that's very cool. And you can still use house. Yeah, sure, yeah. sure. Um, so there is like a quick. Quick start page and the cheat sheet. Mm. So, but with the default bindings, you use um, HJKL to scroll around. <laughs> and with Shift to go back and forward in history or to switch tabs. Mm -hmm. And then you have a small command line which you can use for settings and such. Like I could say, um, I could use it to set. Set this to a bigger font. So can I? Oh, now I'm showing you history. I hope that's okay. No, it's okay. Just ignore the format. Then it can like type and see, have a live auto completion of your history and such. Yeah. That's the one. Every, um, every program to have these kind of features. Yeah. There's a help like um, if you want. More information about a certain command, for example, you can use the help command, similar to Wim, basically. Um, there are a lot of settings. Um, you can also use F to follow a link. Then it's kind of hard to see it, but every link gets a little uh, label. And now. If Follow, yeah. Follow. Pro. Okay. And then you can press like LD, for example, to click that link. LD? Yeah, like I probably should. Ah, okay, yeah, the, the, the so okay, of course. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I restarted without my own key bindings. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can recall the macros, yeah. Oops. No. Nope. I. Sorry. Uh, yeah, the default search engine is. You could change this default start page, right? Yeah, sure. Um, so let's try this again. Oops. I'm used to the US keyboard layout, so this makes it hard. Press F and now you get the label for every link. Mm -hmm. Now if you want to click like the contributing to QBrowser link, I'd press LG for example. If I want to go to um, documentation of settings, I'd press LF. Mm -hmm. And then I get a giant list of, of all the available settings. Um, what else could I show? Can you? I think you can disable and enable some some security issues and some blocking of ads, right? I did this on my mm -hmm. settings somehow, but I can't remember what I did there. Uh, there is a built-in ad blocker yes. just based on a host blacklist. Yeah, and, and the host blacklist. So yes, blacklisting. Yeah. There is a command ad block update you can run. Yeah. And then it um, redownloads the ad blocking list. Mm -hmm. Um. <laughs> and it's completely written in Python, right? Yep. Yeah. And since when did you start this? Uh, about six years ago. Six years ago. Yeah. So it's been my my Your baby since yeah. quite a while. Wow. And also has like quite a big user base. Like mm -hmm. I'd guess a couple of thousand users, but it's always hard to say. Why? Uh, I've been using a similar project called DWB. 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 Um, but it was wasn't developed anymore, 
So I was searching for an alternative. And there are various like Firefox and Chromium plugins, but nothing really came close, like nothing was really immersive. Or... So I started on my own, yeah. And now I'm still working on it, and there's always a lot to do. Um, other than that, it tries to be kind of uh, discoverable. So, for example, there is um, with the semicolon key, you get various other ways of following links. Like you could, um, for example, open a link in a new tab. And if you just press the semicolon, you get a little um, list of available key bindings mm -hmm. until it times out. Or if I press like T, you can get all the key bindings starting with T. There are also key bindings to like a toggle JavaScript, so you could um, use those settings to say oops, uh, content JavaScript um, enabled false, for example. Mm -hmm. And now, um, what page can I show you? <coughs> I have like JavaScript disabled, but now if I use um, TSH, like toggle script for this host, now on Dr. Go in theory. <laughs> oh, it, it redirected me to. Oops. Is this okay? It redirected me to slash HTML. Yeah, now. Because you've disabled the JavaScript. Oops. That was interesting. At Dr. What was this? At Dr. Go to Brave. So it's Dexy the Spray. That's interesting. Because of the. I mean, the user and agent doesn't really say anything about Brave. Yes. This. It says cute web engine, but yeah, whatever I guess. And there's just like a lot of, of customizability. Like, do we have MPV installed? MP? MPV, the video player. Actually, yeah, I think it, yeah, I think it's in, yeah, it's, it's installed. Ah, MPD. MPV. MPV, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, but feel free to install it. <laughs> I love your software on my machine. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I probably need your root password. Yeah. It's super easy. <laughs> oh, I didn't tell you about the keylogger feature in Keep. Well, it's, it's, my password is so super easy, everybody knows it. <laughs> no, please, no. <laughs> God. Okay, in the meantime, I can, like... How do I switch in the, in the stack? Oh, I can click. You, nice. um, I haven't I used i3 in, like, years. Use the mouse, yeah. Are you using i3? Yeah. Nice. I'll just try to increase some font sizes so you can oh. actually see this. Uh, yes, there are like two options. You can either use the built-in set command, or also have like a website with with all settings. It's like config in, in Firefox, or which then um, gets saved in a YAML file, or you can write a config.py file where you set the so, uh, settings by hand, and can even automate stuff like have different settings based on a host name or whatever if you share the config. And Cube Browser just reads the config pi but never touches it. So depending on your use case, you can use those automated settings with the autoconfig.yaml or the config pi file. And if you change something here, it um, updates live. So I could I like, cool. like if I have, um, why isn't this sorted, though? <laughs> it should be. 
Um, let's, let's say I change the background of the status bar in normal mode, let's say red. Well, I'm not in normal mode. There we go. Yeah, that's red. Mm. Yeah, pink, please. Pink. <laughs> yeah, if it's available, if this color is available. Ah. There you nice. go. Well, it's really nice. You like update feature. Yeah. But in command mode, it's still black. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um. What did I actually want to show? All right, the MPV thing. <laughs> so, as another example, I can like spawn things from here. Uh, run an external process. Like spawn rocks term. I get another terminal. Oh. So, you have oh. so you can basically spawn Vim inside Qt process, but spawn what? Vim. Vim. Yeah. Well, not. It will open something in the terminal. You can spawn Gvim. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, I didn't install. Okay. Looks like it. And also, when you are like in in any input field, you can hit uh, Control E, like Edit, and it opens in in Gvim by default. Mm. Oh. But it's not possible to have it in terminal room, right? Uh, you need to launch your terminal and tell it to launch Vim. It ah, okay. works, but it's a bit of a pain. It's yes, yeah. Um, can I, sh I, I can sh somehow show both windows, right? Like instead of stack disk. With E. With E. Mm -hmm. E. Uh, sorry, e and, not, e and not I. Yeah. Um, wow. Let's go just get this over to some other. Well, not me, but this window. Um, well, that's a bad example. The cool thing is, if you're like writing something on, on GitHub or whatever, mm -hmm. or you're logged in on GitHub by any chance. Yeah, I'm logged in, yeah. Don't create a pull request. Oh, no, I'm not logged in. Ah, well, that, that's, I was logged in on Firefox. Let's yeah. just use that one to show you. Um, and I, can, I can write something in Win. Like especially if I'm writing a longer text or whatever, and as soon as I save, it updates it on the website. So I can just change things and save, and whenever I'm finished, I quit Vim and go on with browsing. And if I'm on uh, on YouTube or whatever. Maybe. Are you disabled oh, JavaScript? Oh, uh, I, I disabled JavaScript, right. Yeah. I was about to say, well, we are in Germany and the bandwidth has a problem. Yeah, that too. I'm going to search for. Well, I don't. I try to search for a cube browser. Bye bye, Cube. <laughs> nice. nice. Oh. And I could say, like, um, you've seen those hints before, like the, yeah. the letters to follow something. I could say, I want a new key binding, semicolon or comma V, for example, uh, to say hint links, to give me hints for those links, then spawn MPV. Um, now, how do I do curly braces on this keyboard? Jesus. Oh, ah, yep. You found it? Uh, with the hint URL. I'm not mm -hmm. And now, after configuring that, if I hit, uh, hit um, comma V, I get those hints. Mm -hmm. And select something. And then, in the background, it spawns MPV, which usually takes a second or two, and then crashes. <laughs> oh, yes, yes. Yeah, it's, ah, okay, it's trying to spawn that this URL to MPV. The idea was that, that um, like MPV has YouTube DL yes. integration, so it, oh. it should show it in the video player. Yeah. 
But I guess thanks to Ubuntu, you get some old buggy, buggy version. Ubuntu. Um, but I get what you try to do here. Uh -huh. Let's try with some different video side maybe. Yeah, we can see. Oh god, what does this website become? <laughs> Not maintained anymore, or what? Can you see? Uh, let's try it. Uh, ah, yeah, there was a video, yeah. About the talks. And it's just the Vorträge. So maybe I can use hints here as well, like just, oops, with semicolon V, uh, comma V, and then select the talk, mm -hmm. and if you're lucky, nope, um, ah, uh, only, only video recordings of that. Ah, there are the Zugang mit signierten SSH keys. There's a video, yeah. The yeah, or the ODF and LibreOffice yeah, one. Yeah, as well. But that doesn't work directly, probably due to um, YouTube DL. Yeah. <laughs> but maybe I can select uh, the download link here. Yeah, when I download UCC. Doesn't work. Oh, I think What's it's all, all my, the fault of my machine and the installed packages. Yeah. 404, why, why would that be a 404? Program, Beitrag, Media, Vorträge, Video, T-Barrett, MP4. Hmm. Like does, does the link even work? Maybe you still disable JavaScript, I don't know. Well, downloading it works. Okay. Hmm. Interesting. Or maybe I can just spawn MPV on this URL. And pass in the U. Okay. And it will figure out what to do. Or maybe just the tool is brilliant. Nope. Yeah. Okay, but yeah, no Q process fault. Yeah. But you can spawn like external commands and do quite quite a lot of stuff with it. Mm -hmm. Nice. <coughs> uh, you can also You can also spawn a thing called user scripts. Which can hmm, do I have some nice example? Like they get um let me just show the help first. Like you, you can spawn a script from Cube Browser and then it gets some information uh, via environment variables and the file where you can write Cube Browser commands to. And that's quite a nice way to write integration, like various integrations or kind of plugins in, in any language you want. Like for example, there's um, Yeah, various password integrations yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. or a format JSON user script, which I would show you if it would load. And are they enabled per default or th those plugins? Um, well, as the user scripts? I'm not sure. Call them? Um, like QBrush needs to find them somehow. Yeah. Or let's say, do we have? RSS or so, if you can open the RSS, keep track of the RSS feeds and open new ones. Yeah, but I think oh. it doesn't find them from the repository. Ah, okay. Like some Linux distributions, if you use the package, they also install the user script. Okay. But here, for some example, uh, for, for some reason, the, the links don't load. Probably GitHub's fault. <laughs> or just the Germany internet. <laughs> Uh, what did I want to? But one question. So you have sure. to start like in your computer these scripts, or 
You just need to put them somewhere where Q browser can find them and yeah, run them. Yeah. Yes. What's up? Why aren't those loading? Huh? Thanks, GitHub. Well, I guess they are in the uh, in the repository. This way, I don't have to remember i3 key bindings. If I can just spawn it from Q browser. Um, and I can show you here. Um, like the format JSON one, I think is well, not that simple. Well, reasonably simple. Which runs a JQ, which is some JSON pretty printer. And then pigmentize to syntax highlight it mm -hmm. and writes it all to a temporary file and then just writes a Q browser command to, to open that file, for example. Mm -hmm. Or the what is it, open RSS, open feeds. Mm -hmm. This is one written in Python, which just finds all RSS feeds and tells Q browser to open them. Okay. Yeah, endless possibilities. Well, good. Now I want to know what you are running here. Some random git commit from like one and a half year ago. I should probably do a git pull for you. Yeah, that's the last update I did, yeah. But hey, it's still running. Why not? Until it crashes. I think it's very stable for me. Just Let me see how fast I can crash it. Yeah, that's what I probably already think. I mean, there is a debug crash command. Yeah, great, thank you. Yeah, sure. Okay. Pretty nice browser. Yeah. Oh, yeah, GitHub is broken. When they working on right now? Uh, right now, um, various things. Like, one is just, um, there's like, I finished my studies um, just a couple of months ago. So, in the last year or so, I didn't have that much time for Cube Browser. Now I have a lot more time because it's my part-time job, essentially. Mm -hmm. Like I'm only employed for two days a week. Mm -hmm. And the rest of the time I just do stuff on Cube Browser or giving trainings like last week. Uh, but now there are like always like a fifth, oh God. Like a, a constant 50 open pull requests or so because people open them faster than I could review them. Like contributions, so I'm quite busy with um, looking into those contributions and refactoring stuff to get rid of bad decisions I've made years ago. And also, like the next big thing after that will be finishing a Python plugin API, so I can write actual oh, Python plugins. Yeah, there's like a lot going on, especially with pull requests. Like, yeah, 1,400 closed pull requests. And you have to do more than things uh, Kind of. Like, there are some people with commit access, but they don't review code. Like, I, I'm the only one actually reviewing code. Yeah. Yeah, that's the problem. Like, yeah, and also with people who contribute stuff. Like everyone wants to work on new shiny features. Nobody wants to do project maintenance or whatever mm -hmm. is, is good for the project. So people usually just throw code at me, sometimes even like not very good code. <laughs> then I review it. If I'm lucky, I get an answer, but maybe not. Then I'm stuck with it. Okay, so um, they just give you code and they go. Yeah, a lot of people do. 
and then I just end up working on whatever people throw at me and not what actually would be important for the project, which can be quite difficult. But yeah, there are like 260 contributors, so there are quite some people using it and, and contributing to it. And at least for, oh, fuck off. <laughs> I'd say the majority of the, of the user base is on is on Arch Linux, yeah. and they have like an opt-in package statistics thingy. I should probably just um, turn on JavaScript again, so you're not left wondering why everything is broken. Yes. <laughs> um, So if you look at Cube browser there, it's like... Oh, so 8% of people who use Arch Linux are using Cube browser. Yeah, which seems like quite a bit. If you compare it to like... It only has 12 users. If you compare it to like, I don't know... Oh wow, it's quite a bit over Vivaldi. It's like another browser which is... Could Somewhat you do popular. Chromium as well? Probably for, like. For I'm guessing 80%. Yeah, the rest of the yeah. And Firefox. Ah, but because it's already pre installed, right? Mm, nothing is pre installed on all these. Almost not. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it's it got quite popular, which is both a blessing and a curse. <laughs> Mainly, they were users like coming from that DWB project because it was discontinued, ah, of course, of course, of course. and then everyone was looking for an alternative. So, quite quite fast, people started using it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but now also with like Firefox deprecating the legacy extensions, a lot of people came over from um, Vimperator for Firefox. Mm -hmm. And then I sometimes do like talks. Sometimes people like write blog posts about it, like the like Nancy Mac something you told me about. It's just like the template config pie you can let Cube Browser generate mm -hmm. for you with all the default settings and documentation for it. Mm -hmm. Like almost everything which can be customized by the underlying library is exposed to the Cube Browser setting. Oh. Now I'm wondering how many settings there are. Let's, let's see if I can find out. Oops. What did I break? Two hundred sixty six. If I'm looking at the right thing, but I probably are. Yep. Lots of text, wow. lots of settings. <coughs> A lot of them are, are colors and stuff, but still. Yeah, I think that's pretty much all I got to say. Oops. Fuck. Sorry. <laughs> Q uh, doesn't close a window. <laughs> <laughs>